the paraclete, the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring all things to your mind whatsoever I shall have said to you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Dear faithful, we may ask, how does the Holy Ghost teach us? Our Lord says to Nicodemus, The Spirit breathes where he will, and thou canst hear the sound of it, but thou knowest not of the way he came or the way he goes. This is to say that the Holy Ghost does teach through interior inspirations. And this is part of the answer. It's, it's the part of the answer that can be a little bit dangerous for us because we can have interior inspirations that are not from the Holy Ghost also. A man is easily led astray if he follows his own spirit or the spirit of the devil. How can I know that it is the Holy Ghost teaching me? We'll see the answer to this question in two parts. First, the Holy Ghost is very good about putting us in the way of receiving revealed truths. And second, he purifies the mind and the heart and the instinct so that we see with his help the beauty and the proportion of the received truths we believe, the gift of faith. And then we'll consider an example of what the Holy Ghost normally brings to mind. So first, he is very good at putting us in the way of receiving revealed truths, since he dwells in the church as a source of its life. He will teach you all things and bring all things to your mind, whatsoever I shall have said to you. That is to say that the apostles have a guideline to work with. The Holy Ghost will teach them things that our Lord taught them. He will not contradict our Lord. He is the same one God, and his truths are of the same tradition. They come the truth, Catholic truth comes from eternity. He will teach you all things and bring all things to your mind, whatsoever I shall have said to you. We can take that same guideline to be assured that the Holy Ghost did not and does not teach the church anything different from what he taught the apostles. So in a way, if I want to know what the Holy Ghost teaches, to internal inspiration, I have to look at Catholic tradition. By the faith, I must believe also that he teaches to internal inspiration. I should want that. The Holy Ghost is the best of all teachers. Usually, this teaching of the Holy Ghost is nothing out of the ordinary in the life of the Catholic. St. Paul gives us an example they that are according to the Spirit mind the things that are of the Spirit. For the Spirit himself giveth testimony to our spirit that we are the sons of God. And if sons, heirs also, heirs indeed of God, and joint heirs with Christ. So there is an example of how the Holy Ghost brings to mind the things of heaven, our eternal reward, if we remain faithful. The Holy Ghost came upon the apostles in tongues of fire, we read today. The fire represents, among other things, a burning hope for the things of heaven because fire is upward turning and because it's sharp. Sure. But this recollection of the things of heaven is one of the most common, ordinary experiences of any Catholic. We should want to work with that kind of inspiration. This is just to live according to the spirit of the faith. And we must keep objective revealed truths first. We must remember that the apostles had an unfailing instinct to teach what was true, such that it really was the Holy Ghost revealing God's truth through them. If we ever have to act on, on gut feeling or instinct, we shouldn't easily believe that our instinct is unfailing. 
should never contradict truths already revealed by the true by the church. We must know our doctrine and keep that clear objectivity. Faith is a virtue of intellect. We received the truth ordinarily from outside. The knowledge doesn't just rise up from within us. Faith cometh by hearing. We can't contradict revealed truths without falling into error. Truth is so true that its opposite is false. Now, the contrary example might be, say, in a bishop or a priest who doesn't teach the faith in its integrity, who fails to teach about the road that leads to life. The Holy Ghost teaches us because he dwells in the church as a source of its life. And so he's very good about putting us in the way of receiving revealed truths. Now, he also purifies the mind and the heart and the instinct so that we may see with his help the beauty and the proportion of the revealed truths, provided we are receptive. We have to be open to his purifications. We must know God and the things of God through the light of faith, and especially when we have to renounce things or undergo some pain. God is always the same, infinitely good and merciful, regardless of the consolations or dryness we may experience in prayer, regardless of adversity or prosperity. Everything else in my life changes. Everything else in my life will collapse. That's certain. It's, it happens. But God does not change. To live according to the spirit of faith is to keep everything in my life in line with the truth. My actions must correspond, each with an intention to honor God, to give glory to God. And then when I have to renounce something or undergo some pain, I can say, I believe. I believe in God's love. I keep my peace. When things fall apart, I can say, I believe. I may also say like the apostles on the boat, save us, O Lord, we perish. But with the spirit of faith, we pray with confidence, without anxiety. So by living according to the spirit of faith, all of the powers of the soul are purified, including the passions. And therefore the soul is put into order with its adhesion to truth first and foremost. That's how we work with the teachings, the, the Holy Ghost teaching us from within. We keep first things first and we allow him to purify us. It's not sufficient to simply know the doctrine. We have to be open to the teaching of the Holy Ghost. We must be cautious about too black and white of way of thinking, which hinders spiritual life. Know your faith, know your catechism, keep that clear objectivity, and at the same time, purify the heart and the instinct and live according to a spirit of faith with all of the powers of the soul and be open to the operation of the Holy Ghost. We are not just told that we should dismiss every spirit, but that we should test the spirit. So how do I know if the Holy Ghost is teaching me through some inspiration? Here are three simple rules. First, it should correspond to the defined truth. Again, if a, if a gut feeling or an instinct or inspiration doesn't correspond to defined truth, then it's the gut feeling or the instinct or the inspiration that has to change. One sign that an inspiration is from the Holy Ghost is if we are moved to accept a cross or to practice Christian renunciation. That's the first rule. Two, run it by a good confessor. Every saint that had inspirations, whether ordinary or extraordinary, was humble. He was docile and obedient to his confessor. If someone says, my spiritual director is the Holy Ghost only, and he, he would not be open to the correction from, uh, from, from a priest, he is going away that is different from that of the saints who follow St. John. St. John says, is the one who says, test the spirits. Humility and docility and obedience are marks of the Holy Ghost working in the soul. That's the second rule. And then the third rule, go, go on a retreat. The Ignatian retreats are wonderful opportunities for opening the soul to the teachings of the Holy Ghost. 
So again, he will teach you all things and bring all things to your mind, whatsoever I shall have said to you. So we can take as an example of something that our Lord said to his apostles and consider that any inspiration to the contrary is not from the Holy Ghost. One of the things he says to the apostles is, wide is the gate and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction. And many there are who go on go in thereat. How narrow the gate and straight is the way that leadeth to life, and few there are that find it. Notice that our Lord mentions here two ways. One is the way to heaven, and the other, the way to hell. The Holy Ghost shows the way of salvation. It is narrow and tight. There are things that we have to do to be open to his teaching us. Those who walk that way of salvation have to fight against impure thoughts. They have to refrain, not only from using bad words, but from idle words. They have to daily mortify the flesh. They have to tolerate peacefully the tribulations that the world inflicts upon them. And they have to be wary of excessive pleasures. So one, two, three, four, and five. One, they ought to fight against impure thoughts. Sacred scripture calls him the Holy Spirit of Discipline. The Holy Spirit of Discipline will flee from the deceitful and will withdraw himself from the thoughts that are without understanding. And he shall not abide when iniquity cometh in. He doesn't do it without us. We have to want it. We have to want that purity. Two, they have to refrain not only from using bad words, but even from using idle words. But I say unto you that every idle word that men shall speak, they shall render an account for it in the day of judgment. And St. James says, every nature of beasts and of birds and of serpents and of the rest is tamed and hath been tamed by the nature of man. But the tongue no man can tame, an unquiet evil full of deadly poison. That's what he calls the tongue, St. James. Only God can tame the tongue. To tame a beast, a man will do, but no man can tame the tongue unless he lives by the Holy Ghost. Third, they have to mortify the flesh every day. St. Paul says, Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body so as to obey the lusts thereof. It's true. It can happen that uh, a man will be motivated to do some penance for the wrong reason, and by the wrong spirit, he can do it, for example, out of pride, or he, he can do it out of a kind of despair. The Holy Ghost teaches us to love the cross, to keep the right measure, to offer things cheerfully. Stay with Christ. Fourth, they have to endure peacefully the tribulations inflicted by the world. St. James says, my, brother, my brethren, count it all joy when you shall fall into diverse trials. Do not become impatient if the evils in the world flourish, if you suffer, because it's the norm. It's the norm in temporal matters that Catholics are not exalted, but rather brought low. The wicked ha will have nothing in heaven. You normally will have next to nothing in the world, but with the heart set on the hope for the things of the next life, for the good of heaven, which we aim for, whatever happens on the way, can be an occasion for grace and peace and even joy. My brethren, count it all joy when you shall fall into diverse trials. And then finally, those who walk the way of heaven have to count on it being narrow and tight. And so they have to expect that this life is not a life of pleasures. It's not about having fun. Job says, I feared all my works knowing that thou didst not spare the offender. Our Lord showed us a direct way to heaven with a crown of thorns, nails, and a cross. The Holy Ghost teaches us a love for these things. The way to destruction, however, is wide and spacious. Those who walk it take delight in the impure thoughts. They rejoice in base conversation. They take flight from the tribulations, and they embrace everything that is convenient and delightful to the sense. Let us ask the Holy Ghost today that we may walk the straight and narrow way joyfully according to the teachings of the Holy Ghost.
so that in heaven we will enjoy the society of countless friends. We will be filled with spiritual delights, and we will see our God with all exultation. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen.